Okay, thank you so much for joining me for the second part of my cursive videos here with uppercases. All right, most of the uppercase letters that I use are contemporary. Okay, there are some that, just a few of them that are Danelian, which is a different form of cursive writing. It's pretty much the same, but just a couple different differences. Okay, so I do have just kind of like a contemporary cursive reference sheet right here. All right, most of the upper letters do not follow any particular initial stroke formation. So it has a huge random group. All right, group one, however, it we have an initial stroke here on top that goes like this and then down. Okay, so I've added group one, B, P, and R. Group two, okay, it's an initial stroke like this, almost like a candy cane. So I put K, M, and N in that group. Group three, the F and the T look very different, okay? These are Danelian uh, cursive uppercases, all right, where they do not connect like the, the older style ones did, okay? These ones have no connectives. All right, group four here, all right, we have an initial stroke that goes like this, and then it connects to the, the, uh, the rest of the letter, all right? Now, there's some uppercase letters, and what I've done here is highlighted them, the G, H, S, and B, that actually have mid-connectives to them. Okay, I've omitted F and T like I already mentioned, all right, to have a connective. So it's going to be loose along with the P. Well, I don't know if a P any actually ever did have a connective to it. All right, so um, now some uppercase letters have with no connectives are D, O, V, W, P, F, and T. And I'll give some examples of what that looks like later. All right, so the first thing we want to do, okay, is do some practicing. All right, this is um, considered free, free writing handout or something like that. If you want to do a search, so you can print one of these out. All right, you might want to just mention worm line, grass line, plain line, whatever, writing worksheets, and it'll, it'll pop up, okay? So once again, most of, most of the, um, the letters that we begin with lowercase begin at the grass line, okay? And then they go up, um, some of them dip below to the worm line. Some go up to the plain line. Some go all the way up to what's called the sky line. All right, so let's go ahead and let's practice some of these letters. So I'm gonna look right here at group one, B, P, and R, and do those ones. Okay, in this case, because it's, it's going to be an uppercase, we're actually gonna start at the plain line Okay, one, two, follow that all the way back up, B, then it crosses like that because it's going to connect. So start at the plane, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, practice makes perfect. 
And if you've seen my video on lowercase cursive letters, it does take a third grader, just about the average third grader, about two months, about eight weeks for them to be fluent with cursive writing. Some can get it quicker, some takes a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm going to consider this group one. And what we want to do, um, parents and students, is we want to really exaggerate the height of those letters, and that's okay to do that. All right? I encourage it. Okay, eventually they're going to be able to do the B right in one letter or, or one line, and that's fine. But when they're first learning, have them exaggerate the letters. That way they really pay attention to the stroke formation. Okay, so we're gonna start here, right? Consider that the plane line up to sky, down, follow that line, cross. One, two, three, four, and five. I also like to circle my favorite one too. That way the kids can really evaluate how well they think they're doing with their letters. Okay, so we've done the, the B, now we're gonna do the P. Very similar. From our plane, go up, down, follow that. No connective. You also want to, um, you also want to do, you you also want to remind your children or your students that cursive letters are sometimes tilted. Okay, in fact, most of the time they're actually tilted, which I think is just fine. Okay, but you need to tell them that because sometimes they're used to writing their print letters up and down, so when you have them tilt and you tell them it's okay to do that, they're a little bit more fluent with their writing. Okay, so P. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, now the next one that looks similar is the R. Just like, it's just like the P, except it has a leg that comes down, that's all. It's pretty easy. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Takes lots of practice. Kind of like this one, I guess. Just the first one looks pretty cool. thing right here. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. It's 
very relaxing as well. And it's motivated for kids, especially kids that don't like to write. When you teach them to do cursive, they're all about it, all right? They're probably going to be ready, and I would say probably by third grade, they're ready for cursive, um, the average kid. Maybe late second, if they're very advanced, perhaps. I wouldn't recommend this for like a first grader or nothing like that. B, P, R. Okay, so we've done group one. Now we're gonna go into group two, K, M, and N. And once again, it has that initial kind of that candy cane stroke, I guess. Okay, up and down like that. So let's work on it, K, M, and N. So, we're going to start right all the way up to um, the skyline, okay, and we're going to drop it down to the grass like this. Then we're going to start on the other side, and then we're going to go like that. Make a little loop if you want to, that's fine. It helps distinguish it from the X, and you'll know what I'm saying here in a little bit, okay? One, two, three, four. Okay, if you don't want to loop it, just go like this. So with our, with our lower cases, sometimes we don't take the pencil off, but sometimes with our upper cases, we do. Okay, and like I said, if you want to do like a loop right here, that's fine, where you kind of go like that. Some kids do that. Okay. All right, so remember, we're gonna start here and go down like that. If you wanna make a little loop, you can, it's fine. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. On this one, I'm going to do a loop. Okay? Some kids like to do that little loop, and that's good. Right, I, I prefer not to. I like this one the best. Okay, now we're going to go on to M's. All right, we're gonna start right here at the skyline and drop down to the grass. One, two, three. One, two, three. Notice I'm dropping all the way down to the line, okay? It's not like a printed M. I don't like the way it's separated right there. It's separated too soon. One, two, just have them trace that that line okay and if your child at home is having a difficult time with writing cursive but they want to try it or whatever okay write a couple examples for them I do that with my students sometimes because some of these letters are very tricky when a kid's learning for the first time, very tricky. So if you write out an example like I'm doing and you have them trace it, that's actually a pretty good strategy. I do that all the time in the classroom, actually. I like that one. Okay, probably should have started out with the N actually, but that's fine. Okay, the N is just like the M, except it has one hill that goes up. Start at the sky, go down, do your candy cane stroke, and just one hill, okay? Whereas the upper M has two hills that go to the skyline. So follow that line like this for the N. One, two. Two, 
Case N. One, two. You can tell I'm putting too much stress on my wrist. So what I want to do, all right, as a writer, when I'm doing that, okay, is just to kind of reset. Kids, they start to have their wrists hurt because they're not using their fingertips to write. They're instead putting too much pressure on their wrists. So I want to reset, and I reset by making sure that my pencil is balanced in the web of my hand like this, okay, and that my fingertips come and they they um, grip the towards the tip of the pencil, okay. That's what I do if I feel I'm putting too much stress, and then my wrist starts hurting. So. We've done K, M, and N, group two. Group three is F and T. Okay, and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna begin with just T first. Okay. Oops, I didn't finish my row of Ns, and I definitely wanna do that. Practice really does make cur uh, perfect with cursive. And so if you're gonna write cursive, make sure that you really dedicate yourself to, to writing it over and over and over, okay? T now. Okay, it has like this weird little kind of a hat. No connectives, okay? So this is like a Danielian style uppercase T. One, two. Have it sort of off-center when you're doing this and make sure it's tilted when it looks down, okay? Or when you write it down, make sure it's tilted. Okay, so sk skyline all the way down to the grass line. Kids' hats look a lot different. <laughs> I consider that the hat of the, of the letter. Just make sure that they kind of try to make it a little off-center. Okay? And make sure that the letter's tilted when they're going down. Those are going to be the most important things. All right? So just kind of think about that. All right, so now we're gonna go on to the Fs, which are very similar to the Ts, except we make a cross right here at the plane line, okay? So, like this, down, cross at the plane line. You might not be able to see it on this, um, these worksheets, but it's there. That's why we want to practice with our T's first. One, two, three, okay. All right, I didn't mention that these are different groups, so this was actually group two here, K, M, and N. Just to sort of make sure that they're organized. And then, we have group three, which is gonna be T's and F's. Okay, let's go ahead and do F's now. The more you practice, the better you'll get, obviously. Just 
just like a T, just cross. No connective, okay, this is a Danelian style, capital F. Not a contemporary F. A contemporary F actually has a connective. And what I mean by a connective, it goes like this and then it connects to the next letter, not this. Okay, this is gonna be free from any sort of connective afterwards. Okay, so F and T. Let's go to group four, which is the U's, U's and Y's. Group four. U and Y. Okay, so now, capital U's start once again here at the skyline. Go down like this, see? And then you want to just connect it like that. One, two, one, two. Keep in mind if you're a lefty, okay, you may want to take a look at a video with a left-handed person doing it. Do a little bit of research because the tilt is a little bit different. Obviously, I'm right-handed, okay? If not, it's okay. Holding the, the paper, actually holding uh, the hand and doing the stroke formation does look a little bit different as well. Okay, so we're gonna go uh, capital U's now. All right, in this case, remember, uh, with a lot of these uppercase letters, we're letting go of the pencil on the page. Wanna make it a little bit thicker. So on the bottom, make that line a little bit more. One, two, okay? One, two. That one's looking pretty good, okay? Capital Y now. Capital Y is just like the U, except you drop it down to, you drop this uh, second stroke down to the worm line, okay? So one, two, and three. Two and three. Two and three, okay? Just like that. And it's fun, I like it. I find it to be very relaxing like I've already stated before, okay? So capital Y, one, two, three. Remember when kids are learning to do this, have them exaggerate the letters. There's a purpose for that. Eventually, they're going to be able to write it on only just one or two lines, but for now, have them exaggerate. Skyline down to grass. Skyline down to worm. Okay. I like that one. All right, so we've taken a look at group four now. U and Y. Remember that Group three, F and T, it's Danelian style cursive. There's no connectives. Along with P, but I, I don't think P probably ever had a connective. R does. All right, so now, there's a whole lot of letters that don't quite go into, they don't follow any sort of particular initial patterns or stroke formations, okay? However, G, H, and S, along with B, have connectives to it, okay? The other, um, the other ones have, con these have like midline connectives. 
These other ones have connectives too, but they're just going to be like on the bottom on the grass line, okay? So we just have to practice, all right? And practice we will. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do A. So now I'm going to consider this the random group. I don't know about your students, if you're a teacher out there, but my students, we had this we had this entire um, composition book almost filled out, okay, before they closed the schools for the remainder of the year, all right, because of COVID-19, and that's the time that I'm teaching these videos, all right, it's actually May 2020 right now, all right, so now um, A, okay, continue this. Start at that skyline. A. One, two, three, go down to the worm. Capital A. One, two, three, okay? Have them make sure that they work on just a little bit of a curve initially. All right, this uppercase A, of course, is gonna begin at that skyline. Go down to the grass line, okay? Skyline to grass, just like that, okay? Good. Okay, the next one in the random group is C. All right, and it's quite simple. All right. For any kid, you start at this, over there at the skyline and just drop it down, boom, one. Okay, it's just almost exactly A printed capital C. Simple. Okay, but I'm just going to show it anyhow. Three, four, five, six. One stroke. One of the easiest cursive strokes, obviously, out there. Okay. All right, now we're gonna go to D's. And D's are fun. And I'll give you some pointers on how to do a D, okay? So in order to give pointers on how to do the D, I'm going to, um, I might actually highlight just a little bit, or actually what I'm gonna do is create arrows, okay? Um, to show the directionality of the stroke formation. So here I'm gonna start at the, the skyline again. I'm gonna go down, okay? And now I'm gonna go back up. And this is very important, okay? Boom. So take a look at the arrows. All right, these arrows will, sh will help to show the direction of the letter, okay? You want to have that little bit of, um, you want that um, to raise here, but you also want to make sure that it goes in the right direction. So it's almost like a backwards loop. So I, I start here, I go this way, and then I take it up. Okay, that's how I do my Ds. I've seen people do Ds differently, where they start here and then they go this way, all right? Regardless of what direction you go, make sure that you have that raise here, okay? So I'm gonna go this way, because this is how I do it. I go this way, raise, one, okay, backwards loop here, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, Looks what, look what happens when I don't do 
do it that way. If I go like this, that's what a lot of kids do. Okay, this is a no because there's no raise there. And if you saw, my stroke formation was off with because I didn't raise it. I tried the backwards loop, but I didn't have this thing going on here. Okay, so remember the directionality of the stroke formation is very important with a capital D, very important. It goes this way, okay? All right. All right, so come this way, drop it. Backwards loop, really thinking about the direction of the stroke. Oh, I don't like that one. All right, try to put that out there a little bit more. There we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and just practice those Ds. All right, it's difficult. All right, no pun intended. And I have the kids practice the Ds over and over and over again. All right, some of them really have difficulties with Ds. I will say that it's probably one of the most difficult letters for a kid to, to learn, okay? All right. Okay, we're on to E's now. Okay, E, I consider it, I, I tell the kids it looks like a half snowman, because it does, all right? Start at the sky, go to the plane, and then make just a little bit of a larger bottom, I guess. One, two, one, two. It almost looks like a backwards three. I like that one. Okay. Continuing with this random group of cursive um, upper cursives. Half snowman. One, two. Look at it, doesn't it look like a half snowman? If you could build it this other way, okay? If you could flip it around, it would look like a half snowman, okay? So, one, two. G's now. G's are also hard for kids. Okay, I, te I teach my G's just a little bit differently. And that's just based off the experience I have in the classroom. Okay, I have both of the points on top, the top of the letter, I have both of them going up to the skyline, okay? So we're gonna start here at the grass line and we're gonna go up one, two, three and four and it does connect okay one two three and four now there's reasons I have kids learn it this way all right because this little and it should be tilted right here just a little bit but it's really hard for them anyway to do this letter so I teach them just to go up to the skyline with both of them, okay? One, two, three, and four. It almost looks like a little smile like that, it's cool. Okay, if you wanna teach your kid to lower that side, you can. No biggie. 
All right. But for me, it's a hard enough letter anyway. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to G's. One, two, three, four. It's okay to keep that above the plane line. Okay, I just demonstrated what that looks like at the plane line, but it's fine if you want to show them that you don't have to drop it down to the plane line to, to make it look, look correct, okay? One, two, Remember this backwards loop right here with the directionality of the letter? That's also important to point out to kids. Okay, one, we're gonna have that backwards loop like this. Down and cross for your connective. Okay, so I have them go up like this. And then as they go around, they're gonna go this way with that backwards loop, okay? Sometimes pointing out these arrows is really good for kids to see that. All right, so that's a G. G does take, I like the D, they're difficult for kids. All right, it does take quite a bit of practice for them to be proficient with those particular letters. Okay, now H, I like H, okay? We go this way, one, two, and then we go up and across. So sky, one, come up to this other side, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, lift your pencil, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay, one, opposite side, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay, H. I, probably, I thought about adding this to the uh, group number two, but it doesn't really have a candy cane stroke, okay? It's more like a cane, a walking cane stroke at first. All right, I like that G, I like that H. Take your time kids when you're doing these learning okay I have years of practice and years of practice teaching children how to do this okay but for you just take it you know letter by letter take it slow make sure that if you're going fast you slow down take a look at your reference um, you know contemporary cursive sheet the F and the T obviously are different. I already mentioned that I teach Danielian style ones instead of contemporary. Okay, so now eyes, we're gonna go here and we're gonna, somewhere between the grass and the plane line, all right, we're gonna make kind of like a little half smile and then go up, okay? So we do like a half smile, up, one, two, three, Three. Okay, it almost turns into like a, a lowercase cursive L. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Uppercase I. One, two, Three. One, two, three. Okay, you're gonna have your little half, half smile right there. Three. One, two, three. Two, three. Okay. This one's not too bad. I like that eye right there. All right, and again, just circle the ones you think are the best, okay? And it's great for, like I said, evaluation purposes to really kind of, you know, see which letters you feel are, are, you're doing the best with your writing and circle those ones, okay?
Good. All right, so now we're going to go to, all right, so let's see where we are with our random group. Okay, we've done the A's, C, D's, E's, G, H, and our I's. Okay, now we're going to do J and L's. All right, and we're just moving along, just trucking along. All right. At any time you feel like you're doing too much and you want to take a break, pause the video, okay? Look at it some other time. And if you're already proficient, just find the letters that you need to work on, all right? If you feel like maybe there's just a couple letters you're not very good at. Okay, how do I do that I again? Let me go ahead and, and check out Mr. M's video on I's. Oh, I found it, okay? J's. J's, we're going to start right here at the grass line, okay? And we're going to go up, and we're going to drop that to the worm. One, two, three. Okay, I want to work on, remember the spine of the letter? You want that spine straight. You don't want it slouching. One, two, three, four. There you go, that's nice. Don't start from the don't start from this line and go down. Start from the, the uh, grass and go up, okay? And also one thing about the J is this point where you start, it's going to cross a lot. So we start here and then we cross once as we go down and then twice as we go across. All right? So that's another important thing to remember about that J. Sometimes when I'm teaching kids, what I'll do is I'll just put an X right there and, and tell them start here. And then they go like that with their J. So they can see that it crosses right there at a certain point. Okay. J. One, two, three, four. Okay. Grass, sky, worm, cross. Grass, plain sky, plain grass, worm, cross. <laughs> Whatever. Nice straight spine right there. I like that one. That's good. All right, great. Okay, now we're off onto our L's. We're doing fantastically, and thank you so much for being here and watching my videos and learning. Okay, so L's, we're gonna start here at this skyline, okay, and go down like this, and then just come across. It's not necessary to go all the way back up to the plane line, actually, all right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It almost looks like a shoe, I think. In my opinion, it looks shoeish. One, two, three, four. Okay. Go here to the L's. nice straight spine. I always th thought it was a very beautiful looking letter and it's really fun to write in my opinion. That's probably a better one right there. Kind of like this one. I don't really like this one. Okay. It's okay when you're practicing not to like a certain letter that you make, it's totally fine, totally normal, okay? Just remember the directionality of the stroke formations, okay? It goes this way, 
Okay, as it loops this way, you come down. Okay, that arrow keeps going. Comes across this way now. Okay, so one, two, three, four. All right, so make sure that that stroke formation is correct as you're practicing. Okay, so that's L's. All right, looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, only eight more letters. And we've already accomplished going over most of the, the cursive uh, uppercase letters. All right, so we're gonna do O's now. Then we'll move on to Q's. All right, O's, we're gonna start right here at that skyline. Go that way, and then you're gonna have a little curl at the top. One, two, three, okay? One, two, three. One, two, three. Pretty simple. And it's fun, I like to, I actually enjoy doing the capital O's. One, two, three. Have that little curl there at the top. There you go. I like that better. All right. Not too bad. Okay, now we're gonna go to our cues. And our cues very they look very similar to a two. Okay, except with a two, all right, when we do a two, it's kind of lined up. The top and the, and the bottom part are sort of lined up. Okay, with this one, we're gonna start like this and then we're gonna exaggerate and go out more, okay, like that. One, two, three. So this is what you want. That's what makes it a Q, is that it looks like a two that's just tilted a little bit. All right, so one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, okay. One, two, three, just like that. So much like a two, right? Except that one distinct distinction, like I was telling you, where it goes like this, okay, where the bottom part extends farther than the top part, okay, that's how you're going to be able to distinguish that that's a Q rather than that being a two. All right, so try to remember that. Okay, that's how you're gonna be able to distinguish that better. Okay, if I compare that to the number two, the number two would look like this sort of, right? You don't want that when with your cursive. That's the only difference. Okay, great. All right, now we're gonna go on to S, and S is definitely difficult for kids, no doubt, okay? So um, it does take quite a bit of practice. Okay, we're gonna start at that grass line, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a horizontal line that goes straight up like this, okay? Then we're gonna drop it down like that. All right, and we're gonna make kind of what the G made sort of with that little smiley face right there. Okay, start at the grass, up, horizontal, come back down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, 
four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Over and over again. I like that one. I like that Q. I like that O. I like that L. Okay. So S. Diagonal line. Grass to sky. Come back down. Cross. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, focus on the directionality of the stroke formations. Okay, so they go up like this, right? And then they curve when they come around, and then they go this way. That's why this is a tricky letter for kids. Okay, I'm very practiced, so it's easy. I have that muscle memory, but children don't when they're learning. So we go up, down, okay, and then cross. Remember that initial stroke is just a horizontal line up, and then you drop it. And then after a while, you'll just get really good at it, okay? So that's S. All right, doing good. I feel like I have to shake out my wrist a little bit. Okay, so that's a reminder, of course, that I need to re-grip my pencil. I'm putting too much stress on my, my wrist. Definitely, I can tell. Okay, so I'm doing V's now. All right. Now V's start at the skyline, they dip to the grass and they go back up to the skyline. Okay, so it's similar to this, where it goes V and then like that, see? Sort of reminds me like maybe like a Texas Longhorn or something like that, okay? That's how I like to think of it. One, and it's only two strokes from the sky Dipping down, back up to the sky again, with no connective at all. All right, it's a cool looking letter. I sort of like the way it looks. So once again, we're gonna start here at the skyline, dip it down, and that's a huge one, but that's what you wanna do. Okay. We don't want it looking like a U. All right, we definitely don't want that. And it kind of doesn't look like one. <laughs> All right. And that's fine to do. Notice it is just a little bit tilted and that's what I want to just uh, show that it is a little bit tilted. Okay, and it's not it's not the U, remember how we did the U like this? And then we, we stopped and went this way? Okay, kind of there's what are called distinguishing features or just certain things about the stroke formation that make it look different. Okay, I'm gonna show you a W, all right? And it's very sharp the way I do my Ws. All right, so we're gonna start here. We're gonna go down, sharp points, one, Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. That V looks ridiculous now, <laughs> but it's fine. Okay. If you're doing it on a on little, you know, if you're doing it with one line like that, just kind of, kind of make it look like this. Okay. All right, so W, right? Start here. All right, so one, two sharp points up. One, two, three, four sharp points, okay? 
you want to do it like that, it's fine. Just make sure that the points are sharp. No connective. I like that one. Looks pretty cool. All right, good. So we're doing quite well. All right, we only have a couple more cursive letters to do. In fact, we only have the X, the, um, we've done the W. Okay, now, if you notice, I've written the X twice because there's two different ways you can write the X, okay? Um, so you can write it this way, like that, and then cross later if you want to, or you can do a candy cane stroke like this Follow that down and then drop it. And I'm going to show you the two different ways you can write an X. Okay, this way sometimes gets confused with the way the K looks. But remember that there's not a whole lot of uppercase letters or words with X. So I try to keep that in mind, okay? There's not a lot of uppercase words with X. So that's what I'm keeping in mind here. And I'm going to show you the two different ways. Okay, and we'll practice them. All right, so the first one is, I think of it as like maybe a slide goes this way. Okay, and then you can cross it. One, two, one. And it does look like a slide, okay? One. Two, one, two. All righty. Okay, so we're going to do, um, we're going to just call it X1 or first X. Okay, start at the sky, go down, cross, sky to grass, cross at the plane line. Sky to grass, cross at the plane. One, two, one, two, one, two, just like that. Okay, I like that one. Okay, now we're gonna look at the second way to write an X. Okay, this is a little bit more difficult, okay, to be able to do, and it sometimes gets confused with a K, all right? So what, the whole point is to kind of make like a candy cane stroke first. Okay, so I'm gonna do like a candy cane stroke, and then on this opposite side, I'm gonna go down this way, okay, and then I'm gonna make it look like that, see? It does look similar to a K, that's why with the upper K, sometimes it's okay to make a loop to distinguish or to um, show that it looks a little bit different than the capital X. Okay, so one, oops. Candy cane stroke first, cross and then down. See how much that looks like a, like a, um, a K? Alright, so it does get a little bit dicey with the way it looks there. Now, these don't look very good, okay? Because I want my, and it's good that I'm practicing this because I want it to look like it, the line is continuing straight there. All right, but that's okay. Practice makes perfect. Okay, and I'm gonna do X2 now. Okay, so we're gonna have our candy cane stroke. And what I wanna keep in mind is just that I want this to look like it's extending. I, want, I just want to try to make it look like that's one straight line here. Okay, and it's not easy to do. Almost did X1, so. Okay, so we'll practice some more. Make that straighter. There we go. Okay, start off on this end. Boom, and like that. Okay, we 
maybe like this. <laughs> that looks terrible. I don't like that at all. Okay, so just gotta practice this one. That one doesn't look well because this is this is sort of like a um, doesn't quite look like this line extends down like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to practice others. Okay, so maybe what I have to do, okay, I'm look is just to make that exaggerated more. There we go. I like that better. Candy cane stroke like this. That's not a bad one. Okay. And the demonstration that, yeah, cursive's not easy. Can you see me getting away from it, looking, not looking like a straight line again? This is the best one because to me, this line here looks straight. So that's kind of the way X2 should look like, all right? X1 is completely fine to do. If you just wanna do like a slide and then cross later, you're welcome to do that. Whichever way works for you. This way, like, well, let's talk about X2, okay? The reason that we have X2 like this And so you can just go right into your next letter, right? If I'm going to say, spell the word Xerox, okay? And I did that and I was, I didn't have to, I didn't have to cross afterwards. So in a way, X2 is a little bit more fluent, but it's also more difficult to do and it takes more practice as you can see, okay? Good. All right, so that leads us to our very last letter, Z. Okay, we have, we've done two different variations of X. Now we're gonna go to Z. And Z is a ton of fun, and the kids love it. And they are awesome at it. Okay, so we start at the grass line. We go all the way up to our sky. Come back, back down to the grass. Go back up to the plane to the worm and then cross capital Z one two three four okay and I'm making a big mistake here and I'm glad that I noticed I'm glad I have this reference this reference uh, sheet right here see I was not supposed to start at the grass so omit that idea Okay, instead, what I want to do is come from the top like this. There we go. That's better. Okay. These are lower cases. Forget I ever said that. <laughs> so, around the skyline, drop it down like this. One, two, three. There we go. One, two, three. That's more like it. Okay, so we're going to start kind of near the skyline, drop it down to the grass, drop it down to the worm. Start near the skyline, drop it down to the grass, drop it down to the worm. Okay, one, two, three. All right. One, two, three. Okay. All right, now we're going to look at that very last letter, the Z, in our random group and practice some more. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, I kinda like this one the best right here. All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's just go ahead and take a look once again. Okay, uppercase letters, they're mostly contemporary cursive sty style. Okay, there's just a couple differences. All right, the, um, the T and the F, 
I um, use Danelian, okay? So the next video, I'll show you some how to use these connective letters here, all right? So for example, G, H, S, and B, I'll show you how to connect those to other letters. Okay, these are consonants, so they will have to connect to a vowel, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, and we'll practice that. Um, group one, two, group one starts like this and goes down. Group two kind of has like that candy cane initial stroke. Okay, group three, you're going to put a little hat on it. Group four, you're going to go like this. Okay? Now, we do have uppercase letters with mid-connectives. Those are the ones that are highlighted there. Some uppercase letters do not do not have any connectives, and I'll show you some examples with how to do that in the next video. Thank you for joining me.